The Luniverse, episode five, Old Friends by Grazic Clouds, number two. Chapter four, Old Friends. And chapter four, Romance. Nori grinned her teeth as she pursued Charlie. The wagon was surprisingly heavy, so it was much harder to move than Charlie's scooter. As such, even though Nori had more stamina than her slender frame might indicate, she wasn't able to catch up. But what's making this cut so heavy? She wondered. A simple wooden frame shouldn't be this hard to move. As she took a corner and continued pursuing Charlie, she began to check around the cart's cabinets. One cabinet had confetti, one had colorful hats, one held a miniature oven that seemed to be full of ribbons. That pony I bought at this front possesses a lot of party supplies. But would any pony need this much confetti? Or hats? Or are those cannons? Indeed, mounted in the wagon were a few big cannons. This vehicle has a terror. Is that pink pony some kind of party pirate? Mused Nori. She stuck her hoof onto the cans and found it filled with a sticky, wet substance. Cake batter. From the taste of it, maybe in Ponyville they throw parties by having someone arrive with this wagon and fire cake and other desserts at ponies. This is an interesting town. It didn't matter. She had cans now. And thanks to her studies, she was reasonably proficient in their use. She gazed the distance in the wind, tilted the can at just the right angle for the instruments to spread, and began to fire. I received perfect scores in physics. There's nothing more than a simple trajectory problem. I won't miss! She thought. Well, said Rarity, walking along the street with a smile. You certainly outdone yourself today, Rarity. It's really look beautiful. Not a hair out of place. Not a single snag in your coat. And it's seen in your tail is divine. Today I... Hi, Rarity! Bye, Rarity! Yelled Charlie as she dashed past. Bye, hello! Began Rarity before she was hit in the face with a cannonball size of chunk of cake batter. I apologize! Well, the white coated mirror in a frustrated accent of voice as he zipped past. Rarity stared as he went, slowly shaking the dripping cake batter from her face and eyes. She happened to catch a reflection in a nearby shop window and gasped. Her mane, messy, her coat in disarray, her tail frazzled, just meant she had an excuse to go back to the spa. With a wedding of pleasure, Rarity ran off. Charlie threw herself low on the schooner as the next blast of cake batter soared right over her head and smacked in the street in front of her. She'll hit me sooner or later, and Piggy's cake batter is extra syrupy and gooey. This all gets stuck even worse than a taffy. I have to get out of her line of sight. She realized she was almost at Golden Oaks Library. She took a hard right turn to the next corner, dusted her cake below as he passed by in front of the flower trio. I was scared away in fright as the cake blasted a crater into the Polyfield Street. It scared to the halt just outside the library. Twilight! Twilight, help! In the front of the library door opened, and a brightly smiled Twilight poked her head out. Hi, Charlie. What's up? You want me to show you where the pedagogy section is again? Um, not right now. Charlie dove right through the upper portion of the door, landed on the library door. Just let me hide in the basement. Distract my crazy wife until she goes away confused. Um, okay. No sir had Charlie dug inside the basement, then the library door banged open. Ugh! <laughs> Gas a panty nori. Let's back to daddy. Uh, since... Oh, uh, sorry, I can't help you. Charlie Wentz, Twilight was not a good dissembler. I'm in the middle of a project solving very important problems. What problems? Asked the suspicious Russian. Well, uh, I was going to look up the population of several major equestrian cities for a survey. You know, Triham, Van Coulter, Bits, Philadelphia, Manhattan, but I... Lori quickly ran off five numbers. Oh! Um, you have a good memory. Thank you. Now tell me what Black Terry is. I saw her into this building. Wait! That's what I said. Her footsteps following the rest has probably stopped her. I also need, uh, to finish reading about the Cat of Monte Campo. The protagonist gets revenge on the ponies who betrayed him. And sent him to prison. And all the good ponies marry and live happily ever after. Said Nori. Where's Black Terry? Uh... I had to look up the average participation of the Mild West. Nori gave a number. The average number of trees in the Maple Forest. Another number. Size of Equestria. Number of nobles, including heirs and relatives. The number of carpenters. Three more numbers. The average airspeed velocity of a little swallow. That's late. 
Larry was silent for a few moments. It nearly began to smile. At last, her wife said, An equestrian swallow or from around of Emberta. They fly at very different speeds. Equestrian, of course. After a good meal and a full night's sleep, said Twilight. And wearing a hat. Tilly cautiously it's to open the door to see that Nori was looking at Twilight. Looked weirdly happy in having finally managed to stop the Russian. The school teacher began to creep out. No, said Twilight, listening to Nori give a different number. I think you're neglecting dry coefficients and relativistic effects. You see, Tilly approached the door. Home free, she thought. And then she stepped on a creaky board. Fuck! Nurse turned. Stop! Oh no! And Charlie raced out the door. Hot tire skewer was gone. Nori chased after her. Twilight lost her go, blinking a few times in confusion. Um, thanks for stopping by. Charlie was feeling the burn for rushing around all day. I need to get to a safe place to hold up. Maybe somewhere outside of town. One of the outlying farms? Yeah. Doesn't Applejack have a few outbuildings? The farmers use the farm has sets. Let's get out of town. Hyena feels and wait for her to leave. Or get one out and chase her off. So he changed course again. If I go by Trixie's house, I can get a few tight alleys where I'll be able to shake her for a bit. Then go straight out of town. And then self featherway out of the corner of her eye. The bull seems to be looking for something. But he quickly ducked away. Hmm. By the way, she's really good. I'm sure he's not caught up in anything ridiculous. Now, I just need to get past Trixie's house without getting hit by cake. Then it should be out of danger. Trixie was dropping onto her so Soldier with a villain's dramatic sigh. Ugh, worst day ever, she told Pucky. Worst of the day the Tyrant's son came back. Well, or the day Phil and Mia tried burning down Ponyville. Or Bear Sprites almost ate Ponyville. Or Sakura used alcohol to wreck Ponyville. Or when the nobles decided not to fix it, or Pucky! Tracy threw her hat at him. Man's to land on his overly large horn. The bear not poke through it. I am your boss. When I say I've had a bad day, it's your job to comfort me. That's what happened. And fetch me a cookie and a glass of bourbon. I'll check. But I'm pretty actually sure that's not the point of my job. Pocky chuckled. <laughs> Still, curiosity is getting the better of me. What happened? Remember the awesome new spell I came up with to leak doors? Tracy levitated a bottle of bourbon to her desk. Well, I might have slightly misplaced the mayor with it. Pokey blinked. Hmm, that sounds serious. I was able to use her residual energy for the spell to track her position relative wherever she wound up. Tracy's horn glowed. The purple outline of a pony appeared in midair. It was walking around what could only be described as an annoyed manner. She's moving around enough. That she's obviously not imprisoned or trapped anywhere. She's moving slowly enough. She's not running away from anything. So she's not in danger. But I still have to find her global position and get her back soon. Or Luna will probably blame me for it. Imagine that. Trixie shook her head. Like I said, this sucks. What else could possibly go wrong? Three, two, one. A blast of cakes passed through her window and pounded into her desk, spreading her paperwork with egg, flour, and high-quality sugar. Trixie, you only have yourself to blame. Shut up. Trixie was silent. Pokey giggled. I'm finding the mirror from under my bed. Trixie announced her at last. Meanwhile, on Sleepy Apple Acres, two of our were returning home with a small bag of surplus apples and a large bag of bits. I'll tell you, Blake Mike, those apples ain't rat. Right. There ain't no reason any police to pickle an apple. You want to pickle something? Pickle a pickle, said Applejack. And that's why they call them pickles. Actually, they're cucumbers before they're pickles, said Big Magatus. Whatever. But you don't pickle apples. They're all being low. Applejack kicked the rock out of her way. Tell some answer that was some police first apple. They swear off apples for life. Big Magatus stopped for a moment. Well, I locked it. I'll yell at you anything. You're your old honey if you could. Pink McIntosh smiled. And then stuck his tongue out, carefully at the tip of his nose. I don't know, Aizoi. I don't taste that good. Amistad looked at him, then dissolved the laughter. You're a little better? Asked Pink McIntosh. Yes, sir. 
Applejack smiled. I guess it just puts so much care into apples. I don't care when I taste something that don't make no sense. It's what one thing you like a Moscow, said Big Mac Toss. I was sure our apple trust in Moscow would find our apple too sweet. I guess. Applejack! The two air ponies turned to see Charlie speeding towards them on a scooter. Hi! She gasped and did dash to a bar and slammed the door behind her. Applejack looked at Big Mac and Toss. Oh, uh, so we've been worried about that? Yup. Party wagon rolled up with a tired looking white coat and mirror at the top. It does again. She said, did my wife come by? And two points pies. Laugh, asked Applejack. Yes. No one looked suspiciously at the barn. I am looking for my wife. Is he here? Er, said Applejack. Because I have some things I'd like to say to her. But why, if you promise your wife that you'll know your marriage, you'll actually do it. Oh, said Applejack. Why well, you should not dismiss the first promise you make to your wife to cheat on her with a stallion. All right, Slash. So I'm looking for her. Have you seen her? I was echoed there for a moment. Then she said, Mike, Mike, you know how you told me I got to learn why I can do things myself and when I need help? Yep. I think this is one of those times I'm going to help. I think McIntosh looked at Norris's expression. His president that said, I will tear this down this barn if I have to. Yup. Two apples simply stepped between Charlie and the barn. Applejack looked as stern as he could. Now, Mayus, there we saw an open window about halfway up the barn, starting around the apples with surprising speed and climbing up some conveniently placed hay bales to see out to the side. No, I have you! Applejack and Big Macintosh looked at each other. Uh, Applejack said, Ah! From within the fire and came a few cries. Cows mooed, pigs squealed, poultry began to squawk up honestly. <laughs> Charlie yelled, Can't catch me now! And she jumped from the highest window. Half a dozen chickens tied to her with lakes of hay. Chickens flapped and sold her fall. She landed softly on the ground. She quickly untied the chickens, then ran to recover her skewer. Bye, Apple Jack! I'll be back later to pick up some apples! Get back here! said Nari, burst through the barn door through the back of the on the back of a gigantic pig. I'm going to get you. Ma'am, said Big Magatoss, slightly louder voice. We can't allow you to hurt Charlie. She's a dear friend of ours in this whole town. What can you do about it? Stepped Nori. The pig looked at Applejack, who nodded slightly, then gave a mighty heave. Nori went flying to the nearest mud puddle. Charlie took advantage of the opportunity to speed away. I'd like to let you guys know, I'm doing everything I can not to be laughing at this and trying to keep myself a straight face, but it's sure as hell hard to! Bebop carefully manipulated the equipment until everything was perfect and it came back to record. What sounded was a series of banging, booming sounds with a heavy beat, a lot of energy. Bebop grinned as he continued listening, making sure the music had been recorded from other records perfectly. The mix disc had to be perfect after all. Hey, kiddo, said Final Scratch, walking through the door with a hay pizza and some oat soda. Well, snack? Bebop shook her head. No time. I've got to get this done real fast. Who's it for? That's Final. I'll be on to a cushion and guzzing one little gulp of soda straight from the ball. Miss Tilly's wife is mad, so I need to come up with some real romantic tunes to get them together. Bebop grinned as he carefully removed the record, touching his sleeve. This is going to be awesome. She yelled. Final Chuck, how are you picking out romantic songs? Bebop grinned. Well, romance has energy and passion and, and fun. So I'm picking out the most energetic and passionate and fun music. She put a new record on. A rapid website song began blasting out. Perfect. Miss Tierney will love this. Awesome. How's he come up with this idea anyway? Well. Miss Tilly always said we should do what we're passionate about. Make others happy. And I love music. I want to make her happy. I did that. It was easy. Fairly ran into the studio. School says we have to get everything together. Miss Tilly and Miss Dory are heading back into town. Rats. Bebop grabbed the record and half off the table. Final, if I may borrow one of your records, please. Sure thing, kiddo. I'll set up speaker too if you want. Grand Vinyl. Get the romance so strong, it knocks their hooves off. 
Be my bling. That was a metaphor. You said it will actually not do who's stuff? Sounds like it hurt. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Shirley scared to the center of town. Just he found she could go no further. She was too tired to move another inch. Teacher bent over the appropriate skirt, gasping for breath. Maybe this wasn't a good idea. Black Teddy! I have you now! Shirley turned to see Nori, looking just as tired as she was, slowly sliding into town square on Pinky's now slightly battered party wagon. Sweat and a little mud stirring down her face. Her gaze was still strong and sure. You won't get away. Shirley heard Dennis's footsteps appearing, probably Applejack and Bing Magatosses. Once they knew they wouldn't reach her in time. But Natalia! Wait! The voice was high pitched and squeaky. Yet still incredibly loud. Both mares turned to see Sweet Belt the head of a large group of foals. We can find each other, said Sweet Belt in place of Skulu. You're married! Not to replate. Who are they? Shirley sighed to herself. Uh oh. My students. Well, you have to think of fault in that dispute. They're an adult fault, but. Shirley turned towards her class upon her best smile. Now, class, this is adult mare. I. But Miss Shirley, protested Skulu, we couldn't let you be mad at each other, so we set up the perfect date. Shirley and Nori looked at each other, then the words fall. What? Asked Shirley, though she dreaded the answer. Here! Skulu pointed at a large picnic cloth. It had been set up with heart-shaped pots and plates, jewels, glasses, and silverware, with what looked like chocolate-covered apples. Next to it was a speaker, heavily labeled for romantic music. See? We're all certain you're going to have a fun date. You'll fall in love again, said Skulu. No way blinked. We will definitely... Come on! The foals hurried forward, dragged the two earth ponies to the picnic plastic. See how nice this is? Nori opened her mouth to say something. Apple Bloom quickly shoved an apple into to her before she could. Nori chewed for a moment, sped out with wide eyes. This tastes like bait or the mustard! Chili staring the apples. You know, lucky one. Um... Are your students trying to poison me? No, Natalia. Bebop hit the speaker. The rest of Tierley's response was lost in a blast of web step. Nori put her hopes over her ears. Your students are crazy! She yelled at Tierley. Don't yell at my students, yelled Tierley. You're also crazy! Tierley frowned. I'm not the one who spent all day chasing somebody over Ponyville. I'm not the one who cheated on her wife with an hours of marriage that was her idea in the first place. I'm not- Since the snails looked down from the top of a nearby building, Snail slowly looked, shook his head. See? That plan didn't work. Now they're just yelling. Indeed, Nori and Shirley seemed to be mostly screaming at each other, while the foals looked down in various states of dismay. Nori slammed a hoof down, knocking the apples in place sayings about Letting a few foals running after them in a futile effort to save the picnic. Fortunately, the great Stelzini has a plan. He waved his snips. Help me get this on top of them. Two had spent the afternoon together, putting together two gigantic balls of stickiness, held together by glue, tape, top, taffy, and every other sticky thing they could find. This won't end well. They were confident no pony could escape his clutches. Such glueiness would easily stick the two wives together, forced them to reconcile. What happens once they love each other again? asked Sniffs as she pushed the balls near the edge. How do we unstick them? Snails paused just as the ball went over the edge. Oh! Thinking about that would have been a good idea. Ryan, I really am trying not to laugh. I want to give you guys something professional. And but this chapter is making it so darn hard! Nori stood on her hung legs and threw a punch at Tierley's face. But then something heavy fell on her back and rolled away, dragging her with it. Then things got very confusing. When the world stopped spinning, she realized she was stuck in a gooey mess, more or less facing Tierley, also stuck. And the foals, now including two odd looking unicorns, had surrounding them. That's Tierley! asked Nori, what's going on? I have no idea. Stales grinned. See, Scarlo? They're always talking nicely again. We told you our idea was better. Skulu frowned. What idea? You just dropped two sticky balls off a roof. Two balls? Asked Lula. 
Why did the other one go? Trixie sighed. <sighs> Thanks for the short notice, window pane. It looks great. So you had to hoof on the freshly replaced window a few times to test it. But why did you break two windows over? Well, I was talking to Panky, said the friendly glazer. She seemed to think you needed two today. Oh, come on. Even I never needed a window replaced to a light in one day. A large sticky ball bounced through the window, shattering it and spattering all over the carpet. I'm going back under my bed. Where things make sense, announced Trixie, before going invisible and hurrying upstairs. Window paint shrugged. Three <laughs> keys in her prints. Here I come. And he once again began to fix the window. <laughs> Skill was frowning. You disobey your orders, and Steals. This is subordination. Wait, wait, wait. When are you going to give us orders? A point where a tiara on her head seemed about ready to protest that the orange party was doing the green unicorn a favor by giving him orders. Or fainted at the last moment. Sick of your fools on me. That's what I said to say. Sorry. I did sick them. They did it on their own. They are fools. Do you honestly think they would all work together on an overcomplicated plan with dubious prospects of success for no apparent reason? Yes. Um, what's going on? Said a new voice. Great pointing at a male mayor's outfit, with a young purple foal riding on her back. This foot down landed, two apple siblings riding up behind them. Great pointing looked at the two earth points in the sticky fall. What happened to you? My students, said Shirley, the male mayor and I. Oh, so did I distribute all the parent teacher notices again? Yes, thank you. Did she smile? Look at my right time. You sent out so many this year, you qualify for a value discount stamps. Yippee. The triple fall looked between the two adults. So, um, you and your, um, stuck there, you mean you can talk out your problems? There's nothing to talk about, his story. What the hell do you mean? Dinky's eyes were wide. Why are you so loving, Sandy? That's what I got from my mama. She's the loveliest mama in the world, and she can help you love each other like you said. Yeah, says Gulu. Parents should love each other. Not parents, said Nori. Be a parent, a study has to be involved some way. Really? How? Sweet so well pink. I asked my sister, but she won't tell me until I'm older. Shirley sighed. Class, I appreciate your concern, but this is an issue that Miss Dory and I had to work out on our own. And I thought I told you not to find me any new love interests. Why not? says Lee Bell. I'll help you get back with your previous love interest, she beamed. I think I need to start teaching them about what law rules lawyering is and why ponies shouldn't do it, said Shirley. No, I'm waking you out, continued Dinky. You just ran around. That's because she was chasing me, said Shirley. That's because you wanted to stop. Oh no, no ponies chasing any pony are not stopping, said Dinky in a satisfied voice. So now you can wake these up, right? Now you said Apple Bloom before his sibling's sister. Then she paused for a moment, then looked at Shirley and Ari. Would it help if we went somewhere more private? There is nothing to discuss, said Ari in a voice. I trusted you, but I tell you. I've never been to a party before. I never drunk to exist. You promised you would look first for me and protect me, and nothing bad would happen. Now I find out you lied, that you married me and pretended you had cancelled it. For all these years, you kept it a secret. Was any of it honest? She frowned. What if I had married another pony, Black Cherry? And they had found out and thought I had another man on the side that would seriously hurt my life. But you did not care, because all that mattered to you was the party of fun. I did not trust many ponies, but I trusted you. You let me down, you lied and I didn't lie, protested Charlie. I just... I... She paused and the words burst out of it. You never smiled. You were never happy. And I wanted you to be happy just once. Because I liked you. I knew how hard you worked. And you had so much fun in summer sun. And I was so happy to see you happy. I didn't want to make you upset again. I just 
went along with things, and I forgot all about the merits. I signed the papers at any time you asked. I don't want to make you unhappy again. So soon after summer sun, when I saw you really smile for the first time, then time passed and I forgot. The two were silent for a moment. Natalia, said Charlie, I'm sorry. I should have been more careful. I should have led us into that marriage parlor and bingo hall in the first place. And I should have gotten the papers filed or told you when I didn't. Mary sighed. I was not aware you were working so hard to making me happy. What? So that was just another party for you. That I was just taking it along. I apologize for my lack of understanding. And in the end, I suppose the harm was done. The falls lean closer. I'm sorry. So now at last. We're chasing you today. For not consenting your own mothers. Forgiven? Asked Charlie, small smile on her face. But given. There was a moment of silence. Then the falls all went, ah. And Scooloo, with a bright smile, yelled, No kiss! Scoots, that's my kind of gag! The two started to fall, turn to the falls. Kiss! Repeated the incredulous, not right, because let's kiss. Why not? So sweet about, aren't you two married? We're stuck in a sticky ball, said Charlie lamely. Can't move a muscle. Besides, said Ari, whenever have we accidentally kissed? What? said Charlie. What about when? Aha! Uh said Ogre. The chief of security in the mansion. I knew there were two persons working who certain be. Charlie smiled out, undaunted. This was another place Ari and Charlie had broken into in order to right a wrong. In this case, to recover the money that one of the university bullies was extracting from weaker students. This was, however, the first time they had been caught. Charlie supposed he shouldn't have had a gassy soda at dinner. The guards hadn't seen either of them, but he definitely heard Charlie's burps. We're not lurking, said Charlie. We're just looking for a romantic spot, and we got lost. Oh yeah? The guard laughed. But you don't look romantically involved. Next Charlie, what are you doing? whispered Nori. I have a smoke bomb. Charlie grabbed Nori. Oh yeah? If we were in default, would we do this? And she embraced Nori and kissed her tightly. Nori sifted, but seemed to go along with it. And Charlie smiled to herself as she ran her hooves along Nori's body. No one mayor knew more about passion and love than she did. And she knew it had to be a very convincing scene. Ugh. Said the guard, looking more confused than anything. What? Hey! Another guard ran up. What's going on? The first turned one. Weren't turned. Found these two. But then they started kissing. What? Why? How should I know? They turned back, but both mares advanced to the shadows. Later, once the money was recovered, Charlie turned to Nori. By the way? Yes? You're a terrible kisser. Three out of ten at most. What? Seriously, no technique, no form. Didn't know what to do with your tongue. I think your eyeglasses got tangled in mine. Charlie smiled. You still want to learn every useful skill, right? No some points can teach you how to kiss. They have a lot of experience. No worries, stared at her. And on that note, I am taking a sour. What? I can't criticize your skills? It told me my luck picking needed work. Well, it did. <sighs> Julie smiled at her with roommate last. Eh, uh, back in care up to a five at least. With a little practice. Julie paused. Good point. Will you love each other, Kain? As Apple Bloom, eyes wide. Did you make up? As Lee Bell. Did you frown? Falls, get in their space. I'm sure all your parents wouldn't want you harassing them. But we have to know, says Gulu. We have to know if we saved our relationship. Charlie slowly pulled herself out of the sticky ball. I'll tell you. <coughs> in class, she said at last. Her head was swimming. She needed a drink. Okay. But the cocktails now? Asked Apple Bloom. I worked real hard on the night. And the sneaky ball, says Nips. We knew you wanted us to work hard and help boys like, like you, said Featherweight. I put a lot of thought into it, said Apple Bloom. And to focus on all the little details to make everything just right, said Diamond Tiara. But what to do what we're passionate about, yelled Bebop. She only managed to get her other legs free, tumbled to the ground. 
by everything. She could not help but be touched by the obvious effort her class had extended on this. Our relationship is better than it was, she said. That's true. She's no longer trying to change me down. It was enough for the falls. Yay! They screamed, running around, hugging and high hoofing each other. All right, said Dizzy. Now I think Miss Yardley and Miss Story want some time alone, so... Good, Miss Sue! Skillu began to read the falls away. Glad you've been together with your wife, Miss Yardley. You still have plenty of help for your second honeymoon. Yay! The falls left again. And left. Skillu grabbing her scooter out of the sticky ball as she ran by. Then already tucked herself out of the sticky ball. Just to clarify, those falls are taught by you, yes? They might be odd sometimes, but I still care for them. Said Charlie simply. Now, after that, I need a drink. I'll turn you. As Charlie went to hear a response, her gaze fell to a ribbon on the ground. Sleepy Belle probably had been scouring him all over a picnic cloth. She picked it up and made a note to return to her. It was a nice ribbon, bright and grassy green and... Wait, grassy green? Her eyes widened. Do you remember now why no reason dressed in sucker as odd? Good, she said at last. I'm glad to share a drink with an old friend like you. Nori bowed her head. We can catch up. Talk about old times. Said Charlie, and recent ones as well.